working with your clients, because I can imagine that you attract people that have had, you know, very similar experiences. It's just how it goes. It's, it's really natural that that happens. What is a common theme that you see shows up for them that stops them from progressing within their business? The thing that no matter what the client comes for, I want to make more money. I want to cut my expenses. I want to fix my relationship. I want to be happier. I want to work less. It doesn't matter why they come. Within a month or two, we find ourselves working on the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it is simply this. Everything in your life is it comes because of how you choose to show up in the world each day. So if you can make a conscious choice about who you want to be and then figure out how you need to prepare to be that person every day. So for example, I am an honest person. I, and I, everything I say is truth or I live in integrity. I do what I say and I am what I seem with no camouflage, duplicity or guile. So if a person says something like that, in their own language, in their own thing, then everything that they measure is against that. Decisions become quick. They become easy. Well, I'm that. Well, if I'm that, then of course I do this. And those choices are what really determine everything, including how much money you make and how successful business is. I'll give you an example. I had a client who owned a pharmacy and he came to me typically and he said, I need to double my revenue. Okay, cool. So we went over his business and where he got his money and, you know, what things were the most susceptible to growth and et cetera, et cetera. And then I, we talked for a while about why should people come to his pharmacy as opposed to somebody else's? What was his value add, his unique value proposition, that sort of thing. And finally, one day after we worked, <laughs> I would say I beat the crap at him for a few weeks. He said, okay, I believe that healthcare is not transaction-based, but relationship-based. And I spun around and I said, we can sell that. I said, we can sell that. So then we started working on that. And it turned out that the barrier was him not wanting to talk about himself or to use social media or to do things that would get him on television or do those kinds of things because he had the story that that was not, you know, he was afraid of it. And so again, and then we fixed that and then he made more than double and on, on and on. But the thing is, it wasn't anything about knowing what to do. It was, he was not doing what he knew. And so when we finally teased out his, the thing that he was willing to stand on, I believe this. Okay, fine. The thing that kept it or slowed it, made it slower to go was that was the story about what he shouldn't, shouldn't do, which is what you were talking about. The whole shouldn't, shouldn't thing. As soon as we got that fixed, then it's like he was all over the place and his business exploded. Yeah, that's, that's a great example. Visibility is definitely, is definitely one of the biggest things that I come across self-worth and visibility and if those are missing, it makes it so much more difficult for a person to thrive. They, they just get stuck in this perpetuous loop of doing exactly the same thing day in and day out, same problems day in and day out, same triggers without being able to move past it. So it's such, it's such an important thing. And I, don't, I think you're right. I don't think it matters whether, it, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a CEO, what that's just, it's part it's a life lesson. Yeah, to, uh, the way I describe it, and people can describe it lots of ways, it's, it's just a choice of who you want to be and making that declaration and then choosing how you're, if I'm that, then how do I prepare? How does that being, a being that is though, has those characteristics and qualities, if that's who I am, how does that show up in the world? Like at work, at home, talking to friends, when, you've, when you're clear about who you decide that you are, not because somebody told you, you don't need anybody's permission. That's a personal declaration of who you want to be. Okay, if that's who you are, how does that show up in the world? Those answers are really easy. Oh, well, then I do this and I do this. Okay, cool. Let's do that. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's a conscious decision rather than doing something that automatically on automatic pilot, defining and acting that way until it becomes second nature or first nature. Is it second nature or first nature? I don't know. Whichever one it is. <laughs> Whatever it is. Think about it. 
But the key about. for me is you don't need anybody's permission. Yeah. And in fact, if you think you do, then it isn't your own declaration. The declaration yeah. has to be who you want to be in the world. Why? Because I said so. Good enough. Earlier yeah. on, brilliant. I mean, earlier on, you said that it took you 30 years to um, have the realization that it all came to head, everything. What are some of the signs? Because I was in trauma denial for so, so long. What are some of the signs do you think that people can look out for who, have ex who don't realize that what they're experiencing actually is trauma? They're living with trauma, but they haven't <clears throat> been able to grasp that actually that's what it is. It's like there's, there's a disassociation between, no, this is, this is how it is. It's okay. It, it's fine. I can deal with it. I, I, when I work with people, I just ask them if they're happy, not if they tolerate life. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Is what you experience day to day happiness? Do you smile? How, how is your heart feeling? And if the answers are not, you know, if they're either, well, you know, it's okay. That may be true, but it's telling me and you, then we talk about that. What is okay? What would it, what would it be like if we're not okay, but great? Like, what does great mean if that's a six or a seven out of 10? What would 10 look like? Like, what would need to be happening? And they might say, whatever, have a lot of money, have this, have that, have a better relationship. Okay. Like, nothing is too outrageous. That's fine. Why do you suppose you don't have that right now? Why do you suppose it's a six or a seven? You're, you're settling. Like, if, if you really want that, okay, fine. Why don't we have that right now? Like what's in the way of that? And I talk about it like it's over there. Yeah. You know, okay. <clears throat> like what is in the way as you go to that place? <clears throat> and all kinds of things come up, you know, economy and circumstance and I have no choice and I'm too old and my time's passed and I have all these obligations and blah, 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 blah. And the answer is, yeah, you do have all those obligations. Yeah, you are 30, 40, 50, 60, you are cool. Does that mean, no matter what, that you have to stay right where you are? What if you did this? Well, I can't do that. Why not? Well, no, but you could. Well, I could, but then this and this happens. Is that bad? You know, just in the, being in the question, like, yeah. and, and acting like whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. You know. I, love, <laughs> I love the simplicity of that. That's a, it's fantastic because then you can get into the story and then you can start challenging and shifting perspective. It's lovely, really lovely. To start with, I always treat it like it's over there. Like, what no. is that thing that's in the way? Like, what is that? Oh, well, who said you were that? Well, I'm not organized. I'm this. Okay, cool. Who, who made that rule? Yeah. That's one of my favorite questions is who made that rule? Well, I guess I did. Okay, cool. When did you make that rule? Do you suppose we can unmake that? Could there be a scenario where that is not the rule? You know, just explore possibilities yeah. in, a, in a sort of light and easy way nice. until they come to the place they realize that number one, they made the rules, two, they're ridiculous, three, they're vaporware, and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> See, here's the thing about recovery, I think, is it just does not need to be complicated. Actually, the easier and the more simple you make it, the easier it is to, to navigate, to, to move forward. It doesn't need to be complicated. I have a friend who is a client, also a friend, but a client is not an active client now, but this individual had been on antidepressants for 20, 30 years, and they <clears throat> were acting like a person on antidepressants, like barely getting by, you know, barely. And they wanted to change, or at least they thought they did, when we talked about, well, have you explored this? Have you tried, you know, changing things? Have you tried this? Do you, there's all kinds of natural ways that increase serotonin and the other stuff for that SSRIs and other things are supposed to help, you know, meditation, light levels, uh, how much you sleep and on and on and on. Are you optimizing those things? Have you played with it? Like when I was, when I took uh, they tried me on a bunch of different antidepressants. I tried them, tried this and that. And I noticed right away, this one makes me sleepy. This one does this, this one does that. Okay. Well, what, can, what else can I do? And that's what I mean by take ownership. Like this is my life and I'm going to play with all the tools until I find some that work 
thank you very much. And this person had sort of abdicated everything to the pill. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you need to take a pill, but why don't you play with it and see which is the best pill? And maybe you need less and maybe there's ways to do not. And I would blow off the meds for a while and um, just to see how I felt different. And you know what I mean? To see if the edginess came back. And when I didn't take stuff for a week, sometimes Joy would say, uh, yeah, the sandpaper's back. I'm like, okay. So we notice this and we'll try stuff. But that was an active process. Yeah. Yeah. It is that conscious piece, isn't it? It's about becoming conscious. And, you know, trauma for me has been um, holistic. It hasn't been one thing. It's been a multitude of different disciplines, a multitude of different things that I have to use to, to on a daily basis to manage. It's not, um, trauma is still part of me. I just manage it. It will never disappear completely. The emotional feeling, the emotional, you know, that real deep emotional connection to it, the rawness of it has um, subsided, subsided. But for me, it's been a very holistic, you know, a bit of this, a bit of that, that works, that doesn't work, this works. And building a, I call it a ritual, a ritual, a routine around that. 